Hello and welcome fellow travelers, it's your boy Dean, and I'm coming to you from across the universe with my very first No Man's Skies video. Now I've weirdly named this video, How to Create a Stasis Device Farm for Dummies. Because most of you already know that I rank quite high in this category. So if I can make one, anybody can make one. And that's what this three-part video series is all about. At my farm, I craft 10 stasis devices each day and sell for about 150 million. What? That's right. So if you're ready to make 150 million each and every day, then buckle up and prepare to go to warp. <laughs> that we're going to need to craft a stasis device and they can be divided into three categories. We'll start with the crafting recipes mostly because I feel these are the hardest to get. Well maybe not the hardest but they're going to take a while to get them. So here is a list of the 20 recipes that you're going to need to craft the stasis device including the stasis device itself. Next is flora. There are six different flora types and you can get these two different ways. First of all you can pick them or collect them out in the wild or you can grow them in your base and that's what we're going to focus on in the next video. So keep an eye out for that one. Also we're going to need some carbon. So I'm going to include carbon into this category as well. Our final category is gas and minerals and this is what we're going to focus on in today's video. We're going to need four gases and four minerals. Now unfortunately they can't all be found on the same planet. As a matter of fact we will need three different planets or three different planet types. One hot, one cold, and one tropical. But not all planets will fit the build, so we're going to have to kind of look around and make sure we find the right ones. But before we get started in all that, let's take a quick look on how to get the recipes from Category 1. As you play the game, you're going to find these navigational data chips. They can be found in containers or given out as a reward for completing a task. And then you can trade them in or exchange them for some useful planetary charts. To do this, go to a space station and look for the cartographer. They're located close to the portal. Initiate trade and choose exchange maps. You can also just buy maps for nanites if you choose. Now there are four different types of planetary charts that you can choose from. The one that we're looking for is called Secret Cartographic Data. Trade in or buy as many of these as you can. There are several types of secure locations that we'll find and it's not a guarantee to get the right location every time. So you may use up a few of these charts before you find the right location. Also keep in mind there is two different ways to use the planetary chart. One is in the atmosphere or on the planet's surface, like I just did. The other is in space. If you use the chart on the planet, the location will always be located on the planet. But if you do it in space, then the location will appear randomly on any planet in the system. I feel it's quite a bit easier to do it on the planet's surface. It makes for a lot less flight time between locations. Once you find the right location and answer the question on the computer correct, you will receive a recipe one of two ways. First, you may just get a random recipe as the reward, or you might get a pop-up and choose which recipe that you want. Now if you don't answer the question correctly, you will have to use another planetary chart and do it all over again. But don't worry, 
if you don't get the question right, you can just reload the game from the quick save that was created when you exited your ship just as you got here. And then you can just do it over and over again until you get the question right. Now, in case you haven't noticed, in the upper right hand corner of this pop-up, we can tab to the right. This is where we can find all of the recipes that we're going to need for the stasis device. I will explain this in more depth on our third video, but I just wanted to mention this now because of how long it takes to acquire these recipes. Let's turn our attention to what we'll be needing for today's video. First, we're going to need plenty of salvage data. Salvage data can be found on most planets underground in containers called buried technology, and you can use your visor to find them. Next, go to the Space Anomaly and look for the Construction Research Station. Here, you can buy tons of craftable items for your base. Look for the section that says Industrial Modules. We're going to need to buy the electrical wiring, the mineral extractor, the gas extractor, the supply depot, and the supply pipeline. We're also going to be needing this electromagnetic generator. Next, if you haven't already, check out the exosuit or multi-tool station and buy this survey device mod for your visor. We'll need it to see gas and mineral locations on a planet. If I remember right, it costs nanites to purchase it. Now, we're going to be building a lot of those items that we just saw, so make sure you have plenty of materials, or mats as I call them, on hand. We're going to need chromatic metal, ferrite dust so that we can make metal plating, pure ferrite, and magnetized ferrite. Also, carbon and oxygen is a must. And since we'll be working on an extreme planet, I have some minerals that I can use to recharge my shields. Okay, now it's time for us to find some planets, but what kind of planets are we going to need? Well, here's a chart showing all of the gas and minerals, as well as how many we're going to need of each to craft the 10 stasis devices. It'll take 500 of each of the minerals, and it'll take 5,000 of each of the gases. Dioxide and radon can be found on most cold-type planets. Parfinium and nitrogen can be found on most lush type planets. Phosphorus and sulfurine can be found on most hot type planets. Now we're left with cobalt and oxygen, and they can be found on most cold and lush type planets. Cobalt is a secondary mineral, and at least one of our planets has to have it. Oxygen is more abundant and easier to find on lush type planets, but can really be found on any planet type. On this chart, I say 250 cobalt and 2,500 oxygen, but that really depends on how you set up your farm. These numbers may change. I'll explain more about this on the third video when we craft the stasis device. Now, ideally, we would want to find all three planets in the same system, but that's a lot easier said than done, and it's not really necessary. If you're like me, you'll probably fast travel between planets when you collect all these resources, and a low time between planets is the same whether it's in the same system or in another system clear across the galaxy, so it really doesn't matter where your planets are located. I think a hot or cold planet will be the easiest to get set up, so let's start with a hot planet first. Here I found a scorched planet. First thing we need to do is locate one of our resources, so let's start with the mineral phosphorus. If you activate your visor and look bottom center screen, it says change mode. Use that to change to survey mode. When you're in survey mode, you'll notice an oblong circle in the center of the screen. And on each side, it's kind of like a signal pulse, indicating which direction to go, and then the number on top is how far away you are from the resource in units. Here I found the hot spot, and now I'm analyzing it. And yes, we found phosphorus. Now if you go back into survey mode, and on the left side of the screen, we can see some more info on this hot spot. Just like other things, the potential could be C, B, A, or even S. 
density underfoot is where you're standing. And the max density, I think, is kind of self-explanatory. So what I need to do is move around until I get the density underfoot to match the max density. And then I'll mark this spot using a save beacon. I use a save beacon because they have an icon that can be seen anywhere on the planet or anywhere in that planet system. Okay, next, let's look for the gas, sulfurine, and nice, we're picking up a hot spot. It doesn't look like it's too far away, and uh, yeah, wow, <laughs> it's kind of really close to my ship. All right, let's find the hot spot and analyze it. And yes, I think it's going to be sulfurine. Yes, it is. Okay. Once again, I'm going to go back into survey mode, and I'm going to match the underfoot density to the max density. Once again, I'm going to go ahead and mark this area with another save beacon. Nice. Okay. Now we need to find an electromagnetic hotspot so that we can power these two hotspots and the base. Let's go into survey mode to see if we're lucky and one's close by. No, we're not picking one up. So let me explain how I look for these extra hot spots. First, pick a direction, usually the opposite way of the furthest hot spot. Then run out to about 300 U away from the closest hot spot, and then scan again. If you still don't get a signal, start circling around the already discovered hot spots and about every 200 U scan again. If you get all the way around and still have not found a hot spot, then move outward another 300 U and circle around once again. By doing this, you should find two or more new hot spots. Now, I know that once I put my base computer down, I can only build 300 U in every direction. That's a total of 600 U from side to side. But there is a way to build up to an extra 300 U from the base computer for a total of 900 U from side to side. So as long as you can keep all of your new hot spots within 900 U of each other, you can build as many of these as you want. And hopefully one of these new hot spots is an electromagnetic hot spot. If not, then this area won't work. And we're going to need to move to another area on the planet and start this process all over again. Here on my planet, I find a hot spot about 590 U away from the closest hot spot. And it's about 880 U away from the furthest hot spot. It's well within the 900 U and should work out great. So let's go put our base computer down. From here, on the left side of the screen, we can see our mineral hotspot, and it's just under 300 U away. Coming into view is our gas hotspot, and it's about 178 U away. There's my ship, and now the electromagnetic hotspot. It's around 580 U from where we're standing, which is at the base computer. Okay, now I've moved out towards the electromagnetic hotspot, and I'm 295U away from the BC, the base computer. Behind us, we can see the resource nodes, and I'm standing right on the edge of our build border. From here, I'm going to extend the base out towards the electromagnetic hotspot. Now, I'm not for sure, but I think you can use any object that you can build with to do this. But I'm going to use this half a wall. Standing inside my build area, I'm going to extend this wall out in front of me just a little ways and then place it down. By doing so, it has extended out my build area. Now keep doing this until I reach the hot spot. There's a couple of things to keep in mind when doing this. First, this does not actually extend the circle around the base. It still stays at 300 U from the center. Only this area that we're working in does it extend outward, and it's about 50 to 75 U wide. Also, if you place these walls too far apart, there may be dead spots in between the walls where you can't build. So make sure that you keep them close enough that you don't have those gaps. Okay, sweet, we made it. Now we can build here. 
But first, let's take a look and see exactly how far away we are from the BC. Uh, wow, 602U. That's pretty far, but we can still build here, and that's all that matters. Now that I can build, I'll replace the save beacon with an electromagnetic generator. Remember, it was marking where the max density location was at. Now, one generator is not going to be enough power. We're going to need a few more. But if we place them on the ground around the first generator, then the density underfoot is a lot less than where the first generator is at. So if we go into camera mode, move up into the sky as far as you can, then look down over the first generator, you can stack more on top of one another. And now they're all over the max density area and will all produce the same amount. And yeah, they look pretty cool too. I like that. I think I'm only going to need two or three, four at the tops, but I'm going to put up a few extra just in case, and then when I'm done building at this base, I'll break down whatever I don't need. And now, let's connect them all up, and just like that, our power is in. Next, I need to run some power to my closest resource. So I'd like to make some electrical towers to run the power across and over to my base. The farthest that an electrical wire will stretch is 200U. I use my visor and then I try to do something about 195U away. That way it gives me a little bit of playroom. I just happen to have a wall here, so I'm going to go ahead and use that. Now, speaking of the walls right here, once you've extended your base, don't uh, delete or store these walls because if you do, you're not going to be able to build again unless you put those walls back out. So pro tip, just leave them out. Now if you're the kind of person who likes your base tidy after you're all done and you know you're not going to build no more, then you could maybe come and break them all down. But I recommend just leave them out. Also, I like these little towers. They're quick, they're simple, they're easy. They don't take a lot of resources. If I was uh, running two wires or a wire and a pipe here, I would use two of those arches, but I'm only gonna use one because we're just running a wire right now. No matter what type of tower you're building, you are gonna wanna make some type of scaffolding. That way you can jetpack up to the top. What this does is it gives us a good perspective to go ahead and connect our wires. Now it's not really super important with the wire because you can go into camera mode and connect and whatever you want to do there. But when it comes time to run our pipes, we're not going to be able to do that. So we're going to have to run them all at one time. And that's why it's important to put some scaffolding out. Before I can connect the power, I need to set up the gas hotspot. I'll do the same thing as we did at the electrical hotspot. I'll replace the save beacon with a gas extractor, and then go into camera mode to stack more on top of each other. While I do that, let's talk about how much gas, sulfurine in this case, that we're going to need. Both the gas and mineral extractors have two functions. One is to extract minerals or gas from the hotspot of course. But the second is that it can also store. And that number is 250. Now if you remember we need 5,000 of each of the gases. So we could put down 20 extractors to make the 5,000. Or we could use a supply depot. It's basically a storage container. And they hold 1,000 units. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to put down four gas extractors. That equals 1,000. And then I'll use four supply depots, and that will make a total of 5,000. Now I'll connect them all together, and it's ready for power. OK, let's run over and set up our mineral hotspot. But before we do, let's take a quick look at our valley. Yeah, we can see our base computer right there and our ship right there is our electrical hotspot there's our gas hotspot that we just set up and we are standing at our mineral hotspot which in this case is phosphorus now if you remember we only need 500 of each of the minerals 
So we're only just going to put one extractor up. And that'll give us 250 of the phosphorus. And then over in our base, we're going to go ahead and put in one of the storage containers, and that'll give us 1,250 of the phosphorus every time we collect. Okay, now I think it's time to go build our base. Now, I really didn't spend a lot of time building this structure because the only reason I'm going to be here is to collect our resources. So I really focused on what we needed for this farm. First of all, we have supply depots, one on each side to collect and house our resources. We have a stargate in the middle so that we can fast travel here. And then also on the other side, we have some teleports, one to the ground and then one up above to where we have our personal storage containers. That way, in case we need something out of storage or want to put something in, they, we have easy accessibility to them. This tower was also built in a solar fine thicket, so that way in case uh, we ever run short, we can harvest some, uh, how do you say it, uh, selonium? Yeah, we can harvest some of that here if we need to. It looks pretty good, and it should serve our purposes well. Okay, there's the base tower in the background. I'm standing in between it and another tower that's over there. That tower connects the gas and mineral extractors together. Since that tower and the base tower are too far apart from one another, I need to build another tower here. Also, I still need three more supply depots to store our sulfurine. So I think this will be a great place to put them and use them to make a cool looking tower. I'll put up a few walls, that way I can connect some of these arches to them. Then I'll go into camera mode and take the walls out. Now I'll replace them with three supply depots stacked one on top of the other. Uh, yeah, I think we could have probably moved those arches up another wall or two higher, but it should be okay. Also, don't forget to make your scaffolding so you can get up to your connection points. Speaking of scaffolding, there is another way that you can do that. And that's by using teleports. When you're stretching out a line, whether it's electrical or the pipe, you can enter into the teleports and go wherever you have the second one set up at. And it doesn't reset the line. There we can see I just connected our power. They're glitchy, and most of the time you don't even need power connected to them for them to work. So it makes a good alternative to the way we're actually building those scaffolding. Also, you can pull the pipe line or wire anywhere you want. Here I'm running on, on the ground, and you see that it looks pretty decent. So you don't even really have to build towers. But what you do have to do is when you're stretching the pipeline, is go from one connection to another. If you stop it any time like I just did right there and then try to reconnect to it, you can't. So it's actually useless now. There's no way to use that pipeline. All of this is going to have to be taken up and redone again. So remember, from one connection point to another non-stop. Another way that you could run your pipeline or electrical line is underground. Use your terrain manipulator, dig a hole every couple hundred U, and run them underground. It's a pretty cool alternative to making towers as well. Also, if you wanted to, you could use your train manipulator and fill them back up with dirt. Alright, now there's another way I'd like to show that you can run your pipeline and your electrical line. What I've done here is I've stacked four extractors on top of one another. I'm connecting the electrical line to each one of the extractors. I'm going to do the same with the pipeline. Now you don't have to do that. You could just go from the top to the bottom. It still works the same. I just wanted to show that every time you make a connection with a connection, it's still all connected together. Now that I've done this, I'll go ahead and delete or take out all of the extractors. And now we can see that the final extractor is still running and the 
electrical line and pipeline is running up into the air. You can really do this a lot of different ways. So if you thought that was cool, try and experiment with it a little bit. You can come up with some pretty sweet ideas. All right, now I've already made the pipeline from our sulfurine gas extractors over to our supply depots. This is showing that I didn't end the pipe until I got to a connection point, which is the supply depot. Also, don't forget, you need to connect all of your depots together. Now, we need a new connection point because I'd like this to run into our base. So we'll pull a new pipeline off of it a depot and we'll put it beside the other pipeline that we have just brought in. I'm doing this so that way it looks like one long pipeline all the way to our base. Also we can see that using the uh, teleport works great with pulling these uh, lines. It doesn't reset and now all we have to do is just connect it up to our supply depot. Alright, let's take a look and see what we've got going on here looks like we're making 490 in an hour we've got 1500 of our 5000 already made so i'm thinking it's going to take about 11 or 12 hours to make 5000 sulfurine all right let's go run the line for our mineral phosphorus remember we only need 500 of this our extractor is storing 250 and then we have a supply depot in our base that will store 1,000 for a total of 1,250. So what we need to do is run a pipeline from the extractor all the way to the base where that supply depot is at. Now keep this in mind. If you do happen to make a mistake and you lose a uh, connection or whatever with the pipe, that's all right. Just go ahead, go break them all back down and start over again. Other than it's just a little inconvenient, it's not a real big deal. Also, if we notice, the teleport has actual red lightning bolts on it, which means that there's no power connected to them. And you can see that they're working just fine, even though there is no power. So that's the, the glitch I was kind of mentioning earlier about them. Um, take advantage of that right now. It's pretty cool to have working teleporters that are not connected to power. All right, let's look at our supply depot and see our phosphorus. We are making 500 in an hour. We've got 1,250 of 1,250 already. So I'm thinking two and a half to three hours will make the amount of phosphorus that we're gonna need. All the extra that we have left over, we're just gonna use to recharge our shields while we're here on a hot planet. All right, finally, our electrical hotspot. We did put up five or six generators. Now, let's see how much power we actually need. It looks like 219 kp, is that what that says? Um, we only, well, three generators were producing 225 kp, so there's no sense of having all the extra generators out. From air, this is what our base looks like all the way to the left. Uh, we can see our mineral hotspot, our base computer. In the middle is our gas. Right here in front of us is our electrical hotspot. Also, if you notice, there's a lot of flora thickets around this area. It was a deciding choice or deciding factor on choosing an area to look for hot spots. Since we're going to need flora to craft the stasis device, just in case we're short, I wanted it to be close by in case we needed to go get some. Also, you can see the base right there is built in a thicket, so that'll give us easy access to that flora. All right, let's go check out an ice planet and how we built that. All right, this is the cold planet that I've chosen. On the left-hand side, we can see that's where our gas is at. The right-hand star is where our electrical hotspot is at. We can see the base computer. A little farther is our base, and then the farthest one away is our mineral. Now, I'm not going to show how I built the ice planet or the cold planet because it's exactly the same process that we just did on the hot planet. Here is the gas extractors. There's four of them. That makes 1,000. There are four other supply depots out in the build. Here's the electrical hotspot. 
And once I was done building everything here, once again, all we needed was three electromagnetic generators. Here is the mineral hot spot. We only need 500 of that, so there's only one extractor. Now, I did have to build out or get to it out of the build area so we can see the walls and how far I had to come to get to it. Also, I've used the tip we saw earlier in bending the lines up above or in a different spot. Now let's go ahead and check our supply depots. Here we've got dioxide, 1250. Once again, the extra dioxide we'll just use to charge our shields while we're here on a cold planet. On the other supply depot, we have radon, 5000 of 5000. Looks like we make about 947 of that in one hour. This is the base, what it looks like. It's almost a carbon copy, like I said, of the hot planet. There's a little bit different things here. I played with some supports and stuff like that. But the way these are set up, these will be extremely easy to come to, to get our resources, and then get back to make the stasis device, which speaking of, on our next video, we will be at our tropical planet, we'll be making our flora arrangements, I guess you could say, and how I set all that up, so I hope you come and check out that video coming up shortly. I thank you all for stopping in, hanging out with me today, it's been great to have you for a No Man's Skies video. And just like always, until next time, please stay safe and peace.